This review is made possible by the Restored Rusty Relics Car Club of North New Jersey. If you're in the New Jersey or New York area, please check them out and consider joining the club. They do monthly events, meetings, and have formed a community around these awesome vintage cars. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1968 Plymouth Barracuda. Up front is a 5.2 liter V8 and down below is a three speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Barracuda because it is just so sensational. The 1960s were a really golden era for vehicles like this and I haven't driven a Barracuda here on the channel before. So I'm really excited to share with you guys not only this beautiful car, but a little bit of the history of muscle cars and what happened pre oil crisis here in the United States. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website site zackpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you. But let's get back to that 318 under the hood. I always say leaders of displacement in my videos just for continuity, but this really is known as the 318. Now this wasn't the biggest engine that they offered, but it also wasn't the smallest. You could also find a slant six in here in this era. So this was kind of a mid range engine. I really, really like it. It has that very American low B low end grunt that I've come to know and love from this category of car. Now, like I said, paired to it is a three speed automatic transmission and it's doing a fine job. It has decently smooth shifts and that's all I can ask for from an automatic transmission of this vintage. Last but not least, of course, the Barracuda is rear wheel drive. So how does it feel to actually drive a Plymouth Barracuda? Well, like I said, with that V8, you do get that low end grunt, which is really, really nice. Puttering around town, you definitely feel the power anywhere you go. The steering is super, super light, which is characteristic of vehicles of this era. 60s and 70s cars have really, really light steering. Visibility is wonderful, and just to be driving around in a banana yellow Barracuda, I mean, there aren't many things cooler than that. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three main gauges. Off to the left is my speedometer, which interestingly enough is miles per hour times 10. Very weird. In the center, I get a tachometer. Now this was optional and this particular car didn't come with this from the factory, but the owner put this in and it is the proper gauge. And off to the right, we have our alternator, gas, oil pressure, and temperature gauges. The steering wheel doesn't have anything on it besides the Plymouth badge, love to see that. And off to the left, we have our flashers and headlight switches. On the door, we have manual mirrors, smokers windows, and cranks for the windows. Moving into the center, we get the most basic climate controls I think I've ever seen. Off, heat, or defrost, and you just slide it for warmer. I get a little dial for my wipers, and then this shelf, and that's it. You don't really get much in here, and this didn't even come with a radio back in the day. And down below, the owner has added two gauges just to keep an eye on things. And then we have the shifter. You push the little button on top of the shifter to get in and out of gear, and that's what controls the three-speed automatic. And I actually quite like it. It actually works really, really well. It feels very nice and natural, and has a nice heavy weight to it as well. Then we do get an ashtray, and we don't have any particular cup holders. However, in the glove box, we do have some little divots. These, of course, fail, so it fails the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> However, as a little caveat, you could put it on this shelf and it actually does work. However, this isn't a designated cup holder, so I still can't give the Barracuda a pass, but definitely cool to see. But moving back inside, we do have these seats. The seats are very, very comfortable. However, they offer absolutely no support. They have no type of side bolsterings or anything like that. And most cars, if not all cars in this era, didn't have any side bolsters. They weren't really worried about keeping you in the car. They wanted to keep you comfortable and they do a very good job of that. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right. Getting in the back of a Barracuda. Ugh. All right, so the seats themselves are actually pretty comfortable, but the space back here isn't amazing. It's also not bad, and the passenger side is gonna have a little bit more space, but I always like sitting behind myself just to sort of see what it would feel like if I was actually gonna ride in here. And it's actually not bad. I do have lap belts, but something interesting is that I have so much space behind the seats. It is incredible. It's insane, this shelf back here. And then I still have a trunk besides that. I've never seen that much space just behind rear seats, especially in a coupe that wasn't just a part of the hatch. 
Speaking of the trunk, however, let's hop back there and take a look. All right, so we're on the back of the 68 Barracuda and the Pentastar key is for the ignition, square is for the trunk. So contrary to what GM does. And Chrysler, for some reason, did threads up. But once we are back here, not honestly a huge trunk, which is kind of interesting because a lot of 60s and 70s cars did have huge trunks. However, that is completely negated by the fact that it has a giant rear space behind the second row or back seats. So totally fine, rear trunk space, not great, not terrible, but you know, here it is. Here's the trunk of a Plymouth Barracuda. Oh, and we do get some jacking instructions. Love seeing those, but anyway. Cool. Now we got to talk about the looks, and of course this is awesome shade of yellow. It is not the factory yellow, but it was painted in a very, very good way, very professional paint job, and I really, really enjoy the look of it. Now this shared a platform, this is known as an A-body, this shared a platform with like the duster, and so it does share a lot of those parts. This was kind of the hopped up version. There was a lot of that going on in the 1960s and 70s of cars being offered as two separate cars, but really they're the same one dressed up in different ways. We know this, of course, with the Trans Am and the Firebird, but one thing I do love about the exterior are the reverse lights they are these like little corner lights which i find interesting and this giant tail light in the back isn't actually even a tail light it's actually a strip of vinyl which it came this way from the factory to make it look like it has one giant tail light but it actually doesn't so very odd there However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do i think driving a 1968 Plymouth Barracuda. Well, this experience has been wonderful. It's everything I expected it to be. It's not the fastest thing in the world. It's not going to blow track records at your local drag strip, but you just feel cool while driving it. And I wanted to do a little bit of a dive into the name Barracuda. A Barracuda is a predatory fish. It's actually kind of mean to other fish, kind of bullies other fish. However, the interesting thing about Barracudas is that they're actually attracted to jewelry. Anything light and shiny, Barracudas are attracted to. And I think that's a good symbol for this car because it is so attractive and it really catches your eye. And you know, this thing is lean and mean. It was built to kill because they took the smaller car. This was considered a compact back in 1968. By modern standards, this is a pretty big car. But back in the day, this was a compact. And then the Chrysler Corporation said, hey, let's put a V8 into that thing. And thus the muscle car was born, yes, and we saw this with the GTO and Tempest and things like that, but it's a winning recipe. It's lighter than the bigger cars, but still had that power. And that's what makes this car so special. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Peter for letting me take out his 68 Barracuda. I was so excited to drive this car. What an absolute peach of an automobile. Peter has been wonderful to work with. He organized a lot of the shoots I'm doing out here in New Jersey. I cannot thank him enough. He's one of a kind and he is just the best. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe. If you really liked it. Take care, guys.